Hello and welcome back to another one of my Zapier training videos. In this video today, I'm gonna to be talking you through the Formatter action. This is one of the built-in apps that's built into Zapier that is incredibly useful and really will help you to take your use of Zapier to that next level. Now, if you're new to Zapier or if you didn't watch my first video that I posted last week, definitely go back and check out my Getting Started with Zapier video where I explain triggers and actions, how Zapier works, and I showed you how to set up this simple Zap where if you add a new label to an email in Gmail, we can add that email address as a subscriber to MailChimp. So this is a really simple snap where we've got a trigger and an action that's taking place. Now with the formatter step, this is a built-in uh, app that Zapier lets us use to do some cool stuff. We can actually do a lot, we, it really extends what we can do with Zapier. So if I click formatter, there's a bunch of things I can do with, with the formatter. I can format and work with numbers. So I can um, convert numerical data, I can perform math operations, reformat currencies, and just work with numbers. There are various utilities that you can use, like choosing a value from a, uh, a list of values in a table, or there's the lookup table, which I actually, I actually use quite a lot. There's working with date and times, so either changing the formatting of a date or time, or adding and subtracting uh, time from from those values and then there's working with text like finding and replacing text splitting text um, Extracting email addresses all that kind of thing. So in general the formatter is used as an intermediary action to Convert and reformat information or find information for using elsewhere in your zaps So let me give you an example of a few ways that I've used the formatter. So here's again just another um, test or demo zap that I've set up so in my trigger I have got a deal from Pipedrive, which is a CRM, where if a deal is lost, so that's the filter here, all lost deals, if a deal is lost, it, it meets the conditions for this trigger and it will initiate this app. Then what it's doing is we have a lookup table here. So this is the lookup table um, kind of formatter action. And with the lookup table, what you do is you can specify a lookup key. That's the value that you're looking up. And for this, I've taken the value of a custom field that I have in Pipedrive. So I have a drop down menu with a bunch of options. And uh, when that information comes into Zapier, that drop down menu, rather than showing the value as text, it actually shows the value as a number like this. It's basically an ID. So here we go. Here's all the information from um, Pipedrive that came in. And if I look up deal type, there we go. It's just number 17. So rather than showing the text for the deal type, it just shows a number. So what we need to do is convert that number into some text that I can use elsewhere in my zap. And later on, I want to add this as a subscriber into MailChimp. And I actually want to put that subscriber into a particular group. And this is how MailChimp formats the text for groups. So it's the um, list that you want to put them in, or sorry, the category of the group and the group name. So what this table is doing is it's saying, based on that value 17, look for that value in this list, in this table. And when you find that value, return this text. So you can see here, when it finds the number 17, it's going to return the text, pipe drive automation, arrow, and an advertising sequence. So if I was to continue, and then if I test this now, let's just retest. Let's see if this works. We send the test to Zapier and we can see, yep, it's returned the text, pipe drive automation and advertising sequence. And so later on in my uh, Zap, I have an action and you can see here, I'm adding this subscriber to a group and rather than picking one specific group, that group is gonna change every time based on that, that field. And so now I can insert the output from my formatted step. So whatever the, the result or output from that step, step is, that's the group that we're putting people into in MailChimp. So the lookup table utility in, in the formatter is a very useful utility that I use a lot when, when playing with Zapier. Here's another example. So this is when an, an invitee is created in Calendly. Uh, we use a lookup table based on the duration of the call, it will actually look up and find a number here. These numbers actually correspond to tags in Asana because I want to apply a tag to, to the task that gets created. So here we're just looking up the duration of the call. Um, and so I think it's this is just a step in here. Uh, oh, actually it might be the event. The event type here we go it's it's using this event type in fact i think i actually have oh look i actually have two lookup tables here sorry it's the event type here is being looked up and it actually returns some text 
and I actually use that in the in the um, task name now I remember and then actually based on that text then it will go and look up a tag so again it's looking for the text one hour it finds the text and it returns this value and in my latest step in, in Zapier you can actually see the tag is being applied here so using the format it's a great way to make your zaps more dynamic so rather than just picking one tag you can actually have it pick from a series of tags based on the based on the information that you have so the lookup table like I said very useful Here's another simple exa simple example of the formatter. In this case, I'm transforming uh, text. So this is an example of working with text. And there's loads of ways you can work with text in Zapier. You can capitalize text. You can extract numbers, patterns, phone numbers. You can um, work out the length, pluralize, replace, split text, all sorts of things you can do. Here I am changing the text to title case. Because I'm a neat freak, when somebody books in Calendly, sometimes they book and put their name in with small letters. And if they put their name in with small letters, I'm gonna format that as title case. So it just goes into my CRM nice and neatly with proper title case uh, capitalization. So that's a really simple example of how you can use the formatter to work with text. And here's another one working with a number. So it's actually, this is uh, extracting a number. And uh, because in a later step in the zap, I want to put that number in somewhere, but I do not want it to have that dollar sign. I want it to be a raw number with no formatting, no dollar. So the input is the, the value here with the dollar sign. And if I was to run the test on this step now, it, see it returns the output 514.93, which is just the number and it removes it removes the dollar symbol, which is great. So that's an example of working with uh, with numbers. And actually, if I'll, I'll just move over here. Here's a final example I wanted to show you, which is splitting text. So this is another example of using the formatter with pipe drive information. Sometimes with the apps that you're using, you get the information in the format that you can't really work with. So this these numbers here correspond to values in a drop-down menu, but you can pick multiple options from that menu. So it's kind of like a checkbox. And so you get all these numbers come through, which we can't really do anything with. So what I've told Zapier to do is when you get this number, separate the numbers when you see a comma here. And so if you look at the test data, you can see it returns all these individual numbers. Then what I can do is I can, you see I have all these lookup tables. I can run each of those number numbers through a lookup table and map it with a word that I want to use somewhere else in my Zap. So again, a really uh, a great example of how the formatter can be used to convert information that you've received into a more useful format that you might want to use somewhere else in your Zap. So this is definitely one of the most underrated, underappreciated tools that Zapier has. Often new users don't quite understand what it should be used for. And if you feel yourself using Zapier and you can't quite work out how to make your Zap work, chances are the formatter could be used to improve the quality of information you have or, or make it work in a um, slightly more efficient way. So if you have any questions about using the formatter, please leave me a comment in the uh, description in the comments below this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will catch you in the next video.